Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we're just not here for me to wish her a rousing happy birthday, and especially for this initiative that um, she has started. I pray that it will go places because it's very much needed in our world. My topic is one that every woman knows about. And every, there's nothing I'm going to say now that if you're a woman or you're someone who has a sister that you haven't heard her complain. My topic is stigmatization and denial of dignity to single mothers. I want to say that it goes beyond single mothers. That the problem we have is not only about single mothers, but has to be seen within the general context of women. Um, the last speaker spoke about physical, mental, and social. Those are three key areas that we operate. But what we have noticed is that most women struggle, first of all, with the all three. Things are changing. But let me say that just within a context, I'll tell you two stories. The first story is a girl who isn't married at 40. And the stigmatization she gets because she's single. There is single, then there is single mother. So she's stigmatized because she's single. When will you marry? As if she will go around the streets begging men to marry her. And so the wickedness of such questions is lost on women themselves, who are often the perpetrators of this kind of stigmatization. And it's high time we tell each other that. The people who look down on single people is the women who are married. And this is one thing we must start with ourselves. And I hope Uju will point this out. In many ways, we are enemies of our own progress. I have found that there's a lot of emphasis on women empowerment, women empowerment, women empowerment. A great work, but we have not found out what are we addressing. Just as we look at physical health, mental health, and social health, there is also, on the other side, physical capital, mental capital, and social capital. You know about physical capital, the houses you have, the cars you have, the money you have. In many areas, women are down in this. So if you are a woman with no children and a single woman, you already even, you may be okay. You may be now a graduate, you have money, you have that, you have the other, you have your own house. But we need to begin to teach women that we have to start learning to save. We have to start learning to build physical capital. Many of us, our physical capital are in perishable things. Even in marriage, women spend their money on perishable things. You cannot see what they've done with their money. And this is the first thing we need to address. No one stigmatizes a person who comes out with physical capital. If we're going to fight, we're going to change our mindset. We're going to decide to become relevant with the new economic power that we are getting. Instead, we waste it. We waste our, our physical capital. Many women are waiting for a husband before they can buy land. What are the things we need to do in terms of our physical health? Physical capital does help. Change your attitude to money. Change your attitude to savings. Change your attitude to the things you place physical uh, um, value on in terms of capital. Think capital. We look at emotional, emotional health. Same thing. There is also emotional capital. And the funny thing is, women have a lot of it. This is where we are wealthy. 
We are attachment oriented. The same thing as in social capital. We're attachment oriented. We seek to attach to others. We seek to be friends with others. We seek to be in community. We are best when we are in community. But guess what? Do we use it? No. If there is mental health, there is mental capital. What is mental capital? Mental capital are the capacities you have to express your emotions. How do you communicate? Many of us, because we're emotional, we carry our emotional stresses into other capital and erode our capital. So you want to talk about something that's annoying you to a boyfriend. You just go on and you don't think about it. You just go on. You, you don't check things. You don't look out for what is your interest. You want to get married, but you want to get married at any cost without checking about your mental health. Marry any bastard as long as I marry. And then you marry the bastard and you find that he's a real bastard. And so women do not have an hierarchy of needs in terms of emotional capital. We have a lot of emotion, but zigzagging everywhere. We don't call it to order and say, what is in my interest? There are four feeling groups in all these feelings that women have. Anger, fear, sadness, and happiness. Notice that of these four major human feelings, three are negative and toxic. One is the only joyful one. What choices do women make for their mental health? They make choices that make them afraid, that make them angry, and that make them sad. They make the choices. This is not to say, first of all, why I'm saying this is that so often, if we give others the power to determine who we are, we, we remain slaves of them. And so we need to take the power back to ourselves. Empowerment is not something that comes from the outside. It's something that comes from the inside, like what Uju is doing now, is to sit down and say, I'm getting out of this. What, what capital do I have mentally? I refuse to be in a place where I am sad, where I am angry, where I am afraid. It's a personal choice. So when you see a man that is not meeting your needs, you do not question him. You, de you don't challenge anything, he says. And then as he's telling you these stories, you are listening, you are agreeing, you are following him. <laughs> when you enter into it, because you are running away from one stigmatization, they say, I'm not married. So let me run in and get married. So I run in and get married. I have created double dose of the stigma stigmatization because I now can't get out. It is not the church that makes people stay in a bad marriage. It is the women. I'm a counselor. I've counseled for 38 years. Uh, I am, we, we don't see far. We don't vision for our interests. And to be able to do that, we need more women groups meeting together to say, and that's why Juby is doing very well. We need to say, what are our issues? And I, like I'm saying, I'm, I'm taking from the last speaker, who is a mental health expert to say to you, you don't need to get to the point of needing a mental health expert. You can stop it. So we're at the point of the mental capital. If you deliberately walk into, and this is both for men and for women, you deliberately walk into situations where you make fear, you make anger, and you make sadness, the fear that you are going to eat in that situation then you have created a mental capital that will definitely make you depressed. When I was doing research, I went to the Yaba mental home and I discovered that more than half the women who were there were put there by some marital issue. Something to do with either they are single, they can't cope, no this, no that, always to do with themselves 
in that area that life matters to them. Life matters to us in the area of attachment. Therefore, if we're going to attach to anyone, we should shine our eyes very well. Men are achievement oriented. Women are attachment oriented. And because we're attachment oriented, that baby, that is it. She's carrying her baby now. No father that has a brand new baby, even if there's no mother, will come to a conference with that child. Very few men introduce themselves in terms of the number of children they have. Women always do. That immediately tells you who you are. Become who you are. Who you are is an attachment-oriented person. People you attach yourself matter to you. Therefore, attach yourself to people who would give you emotional capital, not emotional toxicity. You don't want emotional toxins. You want a capital. So it's important that we start by making the choices that take us away from stigmatization. I was at a meeting, it was in a village, and it had to do with you know, developing the family house and all that. And when I came into the meeting, the men in the gathering said to me, ah, what are you doing here? This is a discussion for men. And you are here? I looked at them and I said, it has to do with the patrimony of my father, so I have to be here as well. And they said, a person who does not have a name does not attend meetings with men. Do you know what that means? It means that I'm not answering my maiden name. Therefore, I don't have a name. And that later on, even if this my husband dies, I still don't know who I will be. I will marry somebody else and still change name. So in my lifetime, I can change name three times, meaning I have identity crisis. And therefore, since they think I have identity crisis, I don't qualify to sit with men who only have one name. Have you seen stigmatization? Would it have occurred to you that anybody would say that? I never heard of such a thing before. That because I changed my name, I have no identity. I'm in an identity crisis. And therefore, I don't qualify to sit with people who know who they are from the beginning. Now, these are subtle things. Last week, I gave a talk to single women. And one girl who was married said that she's not sure when the driver comes into the car and says, good morning, sir. And she's in the car. Is he greeting her as well, including her in the sir? Or is she not? Little, little ways of saying. I worked here before and I had a young man who was a cleaner. And the uh, admin officer was a woman. So one day he came to me and said, she said I didn't do this thing well. How can she be talking to me like that? I have her mate at home. I said, you have her mate at home? This girl went to Queen's College. Did your wife go to school, Queen's College? This girl went to the University of Lagos. This is our manager. Did your wife go to the University of Lagos? He said, no, no. I said, where then is, how is she the mate of your wife? In other words, what he's saying is, I am, I can, yes, I am higher than you. I have married your kind. These kinds of social stigmatization only way, I sacked him immediately. Because it's the only way he could learn that in the workplace, there is no male superiority. Male superiority is only in the family. And it's not even superiority. There's, the Catholic Church teaches equality of the spouses. But because there cannot be a ship without a captain, the husband is the captain, but his wife is the co-captain, a pilot and a co-pilot. And he cannot, science is now saying that men think with the right brain and female women think with their left brain. That means that each of them bring different attitudes to a problem. If a man resolves a problem with his brain alone, it will be half solution and vice versa. And this is why we must ask even in everywhere we are, that there should be a good mix of men and women. This now tells you that when a woman is running a home, the mental capital 
she requires that's not there has to be made up. How is she going to make up for the mental capital she needs? How is she going to help herself? The, the gentleman here said so. Socialize. Use your socializations. Check yourself. I need to, there are little boys here. They need a father figure. They need an uncle figure. It is right for them to have men that they relate with so that they can be, they can be men. We as women should not say, eh, I'm a single mother, so I don't need a man. No, that's not the point. The point is that you need that social capital for your mental health. You don't have to depend on it as if without it you die. Some of these skills we can also learn. We can acquire the skills that we learn and use our attachment capacity to give ourselves good mental wellness. I have heard Uju's story and I commend her a great deal. It is true that single mothers have a problem in terms of the social capital, the mental capital, and the physical capital. It is easier for two people to think than for one. And so that already is a dis, okay? So find someone, activities and tox toxicities. I prefer to talk about the better part because she added on the topic, the dignity. And I would like, it's a dignity I'm dwelling on right now. The dignity of finding your capital. There is no other way we live in a world where you must have physical capital. You must have a home. You must be able to pay your rent. Don't keep waiting and depending for a man to do that. Number two, you need mental or social capital. For us, social capital is our connections. Because of who we are, we want to get married. So do men. Don't think that men don't want to get married. It is, there's a kind of thing that we've been saying in the world, we're socializing men into the non-married state. And we are paying the price by having bad leaders. A man who is not a good father can never be a good governor, can never be, who is not a good husband, can never be. These are apprenticeships for being that thing, for having social capital. And so, ladies, our dignity is in our hands. No one can empower us. Only we can empower ourselves by changing our mindsets, rebooting our systems, deciding that, okay, if I don't get married, my social capital is not killed. I can have new social capitals. That is what Uju has done. She finds something that she cares for, that she's passionate about, and she attaches to it. This thing that we're, even if she were not doing this because of being single mother, I think that Uju would have been involved in something passionate at some point of her life. And this is the truth about all of us women. We are passionate for attachment. Sit down and find out what is this thing I can give my life to? Something that I love doing, something I'm passionate about, someone I'm attached to. It can be a group of women, it can be a cause, it can be anything. It can be even your children. But I want to say that stigmatization has no place where the woman recognizes that she has to work for her physical capital, her mental capital, and her social capital. Ignorance is what is putting women where they are. Any woman you see having mental health issues, or anybody for that matter, even a man, it is because we have not checked what we really need. And so important is for us to sit down and say, today as we finish this program, what have I picked up? I have picked up that I need to ask myself, what are my attitudes about my physical capital? How do I know whether I am sad or depressed? You are sad and depressed. You are mentally unbalanced. If you are 50% of the time in fear, in anger, or in sadness.
you wake up you don't want to wake up every morning your heart is down you want to go to the kitchen you get there you don't feel like eating you sit down you want to do some work nothing you look at your economy no money the whole day you are living 70 percent in sadness by the time you live like that in sadness fear and anger 50 60 percent of the time trust me you will have mental health issues and women are doing this to themselves when you begin to notice you are in these areas sit up and say why am i sad get a pen and a paper and write mind map what you are saying why am i sad what can i do about it the thing about god about spirituality is that we as individuals and human beings have been given capacity to get out of any negativity in which we find ourselves that's fact to put it in nigerian um, nigerian uh, parlance god will not send you to the farm without giving you a hole he will not send you to the world without giving you innately inherently what you need to live where you are most people don't necessarily need a degree or anything to live there are many my grandmother was a very wealthy woman she never went to school for day one but she was very wealthy they live by the river and so she became a fish wholesale seller of fish so then smoking it in her house and became the wholesaler for smoked fish and raised all her children four, she had eight of them four of them were educated abroad with money from her fish farm so we have it don't sit down say i have no degree i have no this i have no that sit down you have what it takes women you do trust me it's just that we don't sit down to say how do i strategize on myself and i'd ask you to, to have these strategy sessions for women because we do need it we need a time when we strategize women are also we have a downside we are very because as much as we are attachment oriented we hate the fact that we are attachment oriented and we don't like women ourselves yet our best friends are actually women they have gone through this we can share with them i used to cry out a lot when my husband every day when we were younger he would be going to one young thing or the other where young men empower themselves by sharing their experience and i said to him ah, ah, women are not having these things he said is it men now stopping women from having it <laughs> and i had to say no so women up and around and get your dignity for yourself. Thank you.